Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, here we are again today. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Gianluca. <laughs> we will we, exactly. and I will introduce exactly. the next speaker. So he is uh, uh, Francois Bacelli. So Francois, let me introduce a little bit. Uh, Francois is a research director at the INRIA in Paris. Is member of the French Academy of Science, and uh, during his career, he has been awarded by many prizes, for instance, the Rice Prize. And uh, in 2017, he won uh, an ERC Advanced Grant with a project uh, at the interface between mathematics, in particular stochastic geometry, and uh, communication networks. Okay, so Francois is going to speak about uh, high dimensional stochastic geometry in the Shannon regime. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, you can. You okay. Can, you can start. Uh, we can hear okay. you. Okay. 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 Thanks. Well, uh, th thanks a lot for the um, uh, invitation. It's a great pleasure um, uh, to uh, give uh, this uh, lecture. And thank you for the uh, invitation, uh, Gianluca, uh, uh, and for the um, uh, introduction. Um, OK, so um, the topic I'm going to cover today is uh, stochastic geometry in high dimension, and more precisely, in the Shannon regime. Uh, and I will explain uh, uh, what it means. Uh, and it's more a survey. Uh, I will, at the end, indicate the uh, the uh, current trends and the current questions. But uh, it's more a survey of uh, of uh, a certain number of topics uh, in this field. And so um, I will start with an introduction to Poisson stochastic geometry, um, and then uh, cover three topics. Uh, the first the spherical Boolean model in the Shannon regime, uh, um, which has some connections with uh, 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 with material science, as you will see. Uh, then uh, things which pertain to uh, uh, information theory, um, the poisson voronoi tessellation in the Shannon regime. And finally, I will conclude with uh, uh, ongoing work uh, on uh, Poisson hyperplane tessellations, again in this uh, Shannon region. And uh, I would like to highlight the uh, uh, names of Venkat Nantram at UC Berkeley and uh, Eliza O'Reilly at Caltech, uh, with whom this uh, work is um, um, uh, developed over the years. Okay, so please feel free to interrupt me at any time. Um, so let me uh, at the beginning start with uh, I didn't take it for granted that everybody would be uh, uh, in uh, I mean f um, know all the terminology so I will describe uh, a little bit about Poisson point processes then the Boolean model uh, its percolation property volume fraction uh, then the Poisson Voronoi tessellation uh, with the empty ball condition uh, and finally, uh, I will not go through Poisson hyperplane processes in detail, but just uh, give the uh, small dimension, the Poisson line process uh, in 2D to uh, introduce the uh, uh, tessellations that we will look at, uh, at at the end of the lecture. Okay, so uh, a special point process uh, on the Euclidean space uh, um, of dimension D is a um, random finite or countably infinite collection of points uh, in RD without accumulations. Okay. And uh, you can see that as either a, a cloud of points uh, or a, the acknowledged better representation is as a random measure uh, which puts integer value to every uh, on every Borel set. Right. So. Um, and you have a representation uh, of this measure uh, acting on a function f as the uh, uh, either the integral of the function against the measure or the sum of the function at the points of the measure. A very important concept which I will uh, uh, 
um, partly used in the lecture is the notion of palm distribution of a point process, which is the conditional distribution of the point process given that it has a point at the origin. And for Poisson, it so happens that it doesn't matter so much. There is a famous theorem, which is called Slivniak theorem, which says that, I mean, the palm of a Poisson point process because of total independence is just the Poisson point process plus a Dirac mask at, at the origin. Okay, so this is uh, um, the object and the Poisson point process that I just discussed um, is uh, defined, uh, associated with a locally finite non-null measure lambda on RD, which is deterministic. Uh, and uh, the point process uh, is Poisson uh, phi, a random point process, is Poisson if the number of points it puts in uh, the Borel sets A1 up to AK, which are disjoint, uh, is a product Poisson, um, uh, product of Poisson distribution. So the number of points in disjoint sets are independent. And the parameter uh, of the uh, Poisson number in set A is just lambda of, uh, of A. Okay, when the, when the underlying measure is the Lebesgue measure, say on lambda times the Lebesgue measure, uh, then one says the Poisson point process is homogeneous and the, it is translation invariant. Okay, so um, one knows the Laplace functional, it will be um, not so much used in the lecture, but um, Laplace functional, maybe you saw linear transformation of measures, so you let them act on functions. And one knows there is an explicit form of the Laplace transform of uh, Poisson point process. So th this is the background on uh, the Poisson uh, point processes. Um, okay, so let me now introduce the spherical Boolean model, which has uh, features uh, a stationary Poisson point process on RD with intensity lambda, uh, just the one I described. Um, uh, let's call TK the atoms of mu, and let's introduce a sequence of IED random variables, uh, uh, positive random variables, non-negative, um, uh, which have the interpretation of radi, right? And uh, they are independent of mu. And uh, you introduce associated with this data, so Poisson point process plus a sequence of uh, independent uh, random variables, positive random variables, something which is called the spherical Boolean model, uh, which is a union of closed balls centers at the point at the atoms TK of the point process and uh, a case ball uh, as radius, random radius uh, AK, right? So B, B of TI is the closed ball um, uh, of um, center T and radius A. And so uh, it's good in small dimension, you can feature uh, uh, and, and depict this object. This is a Boolean model, a spherical Boolean model in R2. Uh, and you see what this union is, right? It's a union of closed sets. And uh, in the good case, namely uh, when the uh, D dimension, the, uh, uh, this moment of A is finite, then this countable union of closed set is a closed set, is a random closed set. And one knows lots of things about it. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the uh, number of balls that intersect a compact K is a Poisson random variable with a parameter which is known. It's uh, uh, expectation of the Minkowski sum of the compact K and the random ball of uh, center zero and uh, radius A, where A is a typical uh, radius. Uh, one calls degree D uh, of uh, points other than zero, the number of D of points other than zero, whose ball intersects the ball of uh, uh, at point zero under the palm probability of the point process. Okay, think of a ball at zero, uh, and you ask about the number uh, of neighbors, right, uh, whose ball intersects the ball at zero. And conditionally on uh, A0, uh, the radius of the ball at zero, the distribution of D is Poisson on integers with a mean, which is uh, just lambda times the expectation of the volume of the ball of center zero and radius A plus R. So A is 
Okay, so uh, that's the first thing. Uh, so the degree, I mean, uh, when you think about it uh, in this picture, so you take a typical ball and you see how many uh, balls intersect it directly. And so this is the number of neighbors, right? And you can go on and uh, think of percolation uh, clusters. So the cluster uh, of the origin, uh, K, K script, is the maximal connected component of uh, this Boolean uh, model, this union of closed set, which is closed set, containing uh, the origin, if you want, or the ball of center zero and uh, radius A zero, under part, the cluster of the origin. And one calls percolation probability the chance that the under the part probability that this cluster has a volume which is infinite. And uh, if you work out the um, uh, things you uh, show first that under reasonable moment conditions, which is the one I was discussing, the volume of K is infinite uh, if and only if the number of uh, balls in K uh, is infinite. Uh, so it's a small observation which is important. And the critical uh, percolation intensity exists. There is constant lambda C, which is constant, uh, uh, such that uh, theta, this uh, chance to have an infinite cluster uh, containing the origin is zero if lambda is less than lambda c and uh, and positive if lambda is more than lambda c. I will not discuss critical cases here. Okay, so uh, when you see the picture of what I, I was uh, showing here, you might also ask me what is the fraction of space which is uh, occupied. It's called volume fraction. Um, and volume fraction is defined as the uh, ratio E of volume of uh, Xi uh, inter C. C is any uh, Borel set of uh, Lebesgue measure uh, positive divided volume of C. By stationarity, you can show that this does not depend on C. Uh, and uh, this is the fraction of space which is covered. And in the Poisson case, uh, one can compute explicitly the volume fraction. Uh, um, which uh, is also the chance that the origin is covered which is nothing else as one minus E minus lambda expectation of the volume of the random ball of center zero and radius A. A is a typical matrix. Okay, that's uh, one class of objects. So we start with that. Then we'll use the poisson voronoi tessellation. So the Voronoi cell uh, with respect to atom T in uh, a point process mu is the set of all locations of RD that are closer to T than to any other atom of mu. Okay, so uh, these are uh, the set of uh, half space conditions uh, in uh, dimension D. Uh, and I depict, uh, so therefore you get a convex polyhedron for each uh, each atom as its convex polyhedron, which are the, the loci of uh, the, the, the points of the Euclidean space, which are closer than this atom than to any other. So, and uh, the key thing in the Poisson case is that there is this empty ball criterion. X in RD locus belongs to the Voronoi cell of an atom, capital X of phi. If and only if the open ball of center small x and radius norm of small x minus capital X is empty of points, right? I mean, I am in the Voronoi cell of capital X if and only if if I draw a, uh, a ball around me at small x, uh, capital X is, uh, is, the, is the closest, namely the uh, ball of this radius is empty of point if I take the, uh, the open ball. Okay, <clears throat> and so uh, you can leverage that uh, to uh, claim that the chance that x belongs in the Voronoi cell of the um, uh, of the um, um, uh, atom at zero under the palm is the chance that uh, the point process uh, phi puts no point in uh, this open ball of center x and radius norm of x. And because of the uh, Poissonianity, uh, this uh, thing uh, being uh, uh, Poisson, the chance that there are no points in this deterministic set is just E minus lambda times the volume. <coughs> of the uh, or lambda, uh, the major lambda, let's take the uh, stationary case, would be uh, lambda times the uh, volume of the ball, of radius uh, normal x. Okay, so there are expressions, again, uh, purely computational, 
about uh, characterizing when you belong to the boundary state. Last object, uh, hyperplanes. I will only describe it in 2D here uh, for this introduction. Uh, think of a Poisson point process on a cylinder and think of the um, uh, altitude in the cylinder representing the distance to the origin of the Euclidean plane for a line and the angle on the cylinder representing the uh, uh, um, angle of the line or of the uh, 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 line orthogonal to the uh, straight line you consider. Right? So, okay. so you, you map the point process on the cylinder onto a, a so-called Poisson line process, which is uh, again a union of closed sets, a line is a closed set of RD. Uh, and uh, under appropriate conditions, uh, if the Poisson point process you define on the cylinder uh, a certain property, uh, properties given here, the, you would have that the measure, intensity measure, the former lambda of this uh, point process on the cylinder is of the form, form lambda times Lebesgue on R times any distribution Q uh, on theta, 0 pi or 0, 2 pi. Here, take zero pi. Uh, then uh, any such process leads to a set of lines which is translation invariant, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is called a, um, a Poisson line process. And uh, uh, one can compute lots of things on that. Um, uh, uh, I will not go into details, but uh, line measures, for instance, which would look at the sum of the you're in 2D here of the uh, line measure of uh, all lines that intersect uh, a set V, where V is an equal set, and so one can compute uh, um, all characteristics of this type of things. Okay. Um, very good. Of course, here I only describe visually things in two, 2D, but uh, you can define hyperplane processes, uh, which would be Poisson, uh, and for that you would have to uh, think of uh, uh, again, uh, something a bit more complex. Um, can we find a random graph? I see a question. So, uh, based on the Boolean model, where the vertices are centers, yes, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, a, a graph, and the percolation uh, of the Boolean model uh, is indeed uh, equivalent to uh, the fact that this graph has an infinite component. And uh, uh, this is a very important graph. Uh, we will discuss it a bit later. Thank you. Okay, so uh, after this uh, brief introduction, let me start with topic one. Um, uh, okay, um, so um, the um, spherical Boolean in the Shannon region, right? So we uh, define things uh, um, um, in terms of what the Boolean model is. So uh, we let the, n dim uh, the dimension tend to infinity of the Euclidean space and pick an intensity, and this is the Shannon regime, with densities which is exponential so in, uh, in, uh, in n. Uh, rho is called the, log, uh, the normalized log intensity, logarithmic intensity. And the radii uh, will be order square root of n. That's what you need, as you realize very quickly, to find interesting objects. And it will be the same in information theory. And the statement will be that uh, the radius uh, a n is of the form x n times square root of n, where x n satisfies a large deviation principle. And so I will not enter into very much detail, uh, but typically this would be the either in the ID case, uh, the Kramer conditions or the Gertner Ellis theorem for the, uh, uh, for the uh, case with dependency uh, um, um, across dimensions, right? So that's, uh, and uh, I will call capital I the rate function and assume it's a good convex rate function. Okay, and uh, I also assume that the mean exists and converges as dimension to infinity to some R star, which is non degenerate Okay, so I recall the gertner ellis uh, conditions uh, for the, uh, the variable Xn, uh, which is in the term of um, uh, moment genetic functions. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, so 
since I let n go to infinity, I have to add this uh, subscript n to every object, the point processes, the intensities, the palm, uh, the points, the radii, and everything, right? Uh, and the same thing for the characteristics, the degree, uh, the n, the uh, time, the chance of percolation, fn, the volume fraction, and things like that, right? Uh, and uh, I will look at the random case uh, and at the deterministic case uh, where Xn is a constant um, uh, that tends to, uh, for all dimensions, that tends to R star. For instance, Rn is R star, right? So th these are the settings. Okay, uh, here is an information theory example where this shows up naturally. Uh, think of uh, um, um, now, each point being associated uh, um, um, Gaussian displacement per dimension, uh, IID. Okay, so point K has uh, uh, N entries which are Gaussian uh, centered with variance sigma square. Um, and, um, and so what happens is that um, if you look at the vector uh, TNK, a point of the point process plus uh, WNK, this uh, n-dimensional displacement Gaussian vector. So it belongs to the uh, to the um, to the sphere of center TNK and um, uh, um, radius uh, um, uh, norm of WNK, which you can rewrite uh, as uh, which you can rewrite as x n k uh, uh, time square root of n. Where x and k is uh, the empirical uh, mean of the squares of the w, right, uh, up to a power one half, and this satisfies the LDP, a large deviation principle, with this uh, rate function, uh, which is associated with the uh, with the Gaussian case, right? Um, okay, so this is an instance uh, where you would see these balls coming from a, a random displacement with a Gaussian per dimension, which is very much information theoretic. Okay. So let me now describe the results, uh, which will be typical of what we will do a bit later. There is constants, a tau d, degree threshold, uh, tau p, percolation threshold, tau v, volume fraction threshold, which are ordered with possible degeneracy. So it could be that tau d is equal to tau p. So that when you increase rho, let me describe what happens. So for rho less than tau d, in the limit, uh, this is a solipsism. I mean, the, every every point is isolated. It has no neighbors, right? The e, e, e of the n or e zero n the palm under the uh, 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 of the number of neighbors of this ball center center the origin c zeros neighbors. When you increase and cross tau d, um, the number of neighbors suddenly jumps to infinity. And at the same time, theta n, the chance of percolation, of course, if you see no neighbors, <laughs> and this is linked to the question with us about the graphs, right? So uh, you see no neighbors, so there's no percolation. Uh, so percolation parameter is zero. You go on, you go on and increase up to tau p, the percolation threshold. And then, uh, then suddenly at tau p, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, chance of percolation is positive and remains after that. But still, volume fraction is zero. Okay, and then you go on up to tau v, and then volume fraction becomes one. Okay, and so um, um, let me describe what's going on because, in terms of uh, 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 material science, it's very interesting. In each dimension, so one associates the notion of percolation with some sort of rigidity, right? So uh, the balls intersect; and, uh, you cannot compress the things, right? Um, uh, using the, the void. And so when you think about it in, in, in infinite dimension, uh, things are, have, um, to get rigidity, uh, <laughs> this type of rigidity, you, you, you have to occupy space, right? Volume fraction cannot be zero. In infinite dimension, things are very, very strange. Um, first, you see nobody. Then suddenly you see an infinite number of neighbors, but it doesn't mean you percolate. It, uh, in the sense that percolation here has to be understood in a slightly different sense, not, not having an infinite cluster, but uh, um, being able to move from one part of space to the other part of space, right? Uh, very far away. That's what percolation uh, should mean in this case. 
But still, you have percolation, but volume fraction is still zero. And then it becomes one. So you can be rigid with occupying a um, um, fraction of space, which is zero, uh, just before and uh, 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 just uh, between tau p and tau v. OK, uh, so um, and here are the results. So I will uh, just uh, go briefly about the uh, things. I mean, uh, uh, you remember this rate function for the radii uh, up to square root of n. So tau d uh, is uh, given by this expression. So uh, and it involves the rate function of the radii, the i function, and uh, solving an optimization problem that you see on the right. Uh, and as I said, for rho less than tau d, uh, expectation of degree tends to zero. For uh, rho more than tau d, it's the other way around, tends to infinity. And one can check uh, the, the, the rate at which these things happen. Because in both cases, the expectation in log scale, uh, re, re renormalized by 1 over n, tends to this uh, constant rho minus tau d. OK, so this is our deviation. I will not give so much proofs. So I have no time. Um, and there are lots of cases you can solve. Uh, here is the deterministic case, the Gaussian case, uh, and things like that. Where you... OK, so let me sketch, uh, not sketch the proof. <laughs> we'll, uh... OK, percolation threshold now. Uh, this is the expression for the percolation threshold. It takes sense result. It is a threshold that had been found uh, by uh, Penrose in the deterministic radius case, and there was no optimization problem there. But in the random radius case, uh, this is the expression for the uh, uh, for the uh, um, um, uh, percolation threshold. Um, again, the special expression for the deterministic and Gaussian case, uh, um, which are given here. Um, whereas the uh, volume fraction threshold. Um, is uh, uh, of the following. Uh, so things are a bit different here in terms of uh, of how you do, you get the so-called error exponents. But the threshold is uh, obtained by solving yet another optimization problem based on the rate function of the radii. Uh, and uh, one knows also the uh, uh, error exponents uh, close to, uh, close to uh, tau v. Um, uh, the first one uh, below is of the same shape, uh, and in the uh, the one above uh, is uh, slightly more complex. Um, uh, but one knows exactly uh, uh, how you uh, um, are close to uh, to one in the uh, in the uh, above the threshold, and so. Um, one uses this stochastic ge uh, geometry representation of volume fraction and the large deviation principle to to get this type of uh, results. Okay, so uh, let me move to the second topic, uh, which is now uh, the uh, poisson Voronoi case. Um, and uh, for lattices, this uh, line of thought was started uh, by Paul Tiref uh, in 94. And uh, with Venkat and Antram, we started developing uh, the um, Poisson version of it. So uh, think of the following problem. It's a vision of uh, uh, channel coding in information theory. So you get a code book, which is uh, n-dimensional. You know that uh, block lengths should tend to infinity. So n will tend to infinity, dimension will tend to infinity. Uh, this is a code book. It's a Poisson point process of uh, dimension n. Um, and now let's uh, think of uh, Gaussian additive noise and displacement uh, as the one I described a bit earlier. So uh, IID per dimension and per point. Uh, each code word is blurred by an additive noise, right? Which is uh, Gaussian uh, with uh, centered and variance uh, sigma square per dimension with IED components. And think of the displaced code book. You look at all the code words, and you displace each of them by uh, one of these W Gaussian displacements. And these are understood as the received messages, whereas the code words are the sent messages, right? And think of uh, VK of N as a Voronoi cell of TNK in mu N. This, and this makes sense in the Gaussian case because uh, you know that likelihood is Euclidean distance. And if you pretend 
when you receive a code, blurred code word, that uh, the code word which is received is the one which is the closest to you compared to the others, you do what is best in terms of maximum likelihood, right? And it makes sense to let dimension go to infinity because that's what Shannon said. Uh, and that's where phase transition take place and are deterministic and it's linked to Shannon capacity. Okay, maximum likelihood, uh, I ex explained what it means. Uh, and the maximum likelihood decoding error probability is nothing else as the chance that the blurred code word of the origin, which is the W0 vector, does not belong to the Voronoi cell under the palm of the origin. That's what I just said, right? Maximum likelihood, uh, you're under palm, you sit at W, you check uh, what is the closest code word, right? And uh, you, uh, uh, um, you fail if this blurred code word, W0, does not belong to the Voronoi cell uh, of the point which is the code word, zero. Okay, and uh, the result is that under this uh, Gaussian case, the error probability, uh, and uh, um, um, the uh, maximum likelihood success probability, I will give it in these terms, is given by this integral expression, where you recognize uh, a gamma type uh, uh, distribution uh, up to uh, a small modification. Uh, so it will be the square root of a gamma, a gamma distributed random variable, uh, integrated against a function uh, that in which you see the intensity lambda n, which behaves, uh, as we said, exponentially, uh, kappa n, which is the volume of the one ball, uh, or the n ball of radius one and R, Rn is the uh, R is the uh, is the integration uh, variable. And so the, uh, I, as I said I would sketch no proof, but I can't resist just say how you get this expression, right? So the W as uh, density, uh, the, the the norm, uh, the norm is the sum of squares. Uh, uh, raised to the power one half, right? The sum of squares of Gaussian is the sum of exponential, uh, the sum of exponential is gamma, and therefore you get the GN function, which will give you where the uh, blurred code word lands, the distance at which it lands from the origin, right? And then you use the ball condition, the empty ball condition, right? So the, the chance uh, that uh, this ball uh, of uh, uh, radius r is empty of points uh, is exactly uh, the chance that you uh, belong to the uh, Voronoi cell, right, of zero, and uh, it's just an empty ball condition. So this is e minus lambda n kappa n r n, the volume of the uh, n ball of radius r. And then you use Varadan's lemma to get uh, a result, which is the one uh, which was uh, studied uh, by uh, Paul Tirev, that the uh, Shannon threshold uh, under which the, uh, uh, below which you uh, can decode in terms of sigma and above which you cannot decode is given just by the uh, 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 classical, I mean, you recognize uh, an entropy of a Gaussian. If rho is more than tau s, then pn stands to one, if rho is less than tau n, then uh, um, uh, than tau s, uh, the um, pn uh, uh, tends to zero. The probability of uh, um, the probability of error, uh, and uh, one knows in the same vein as what I did earlier, the uh, was derived by Paul Tirev, the exponent if you are below. If you are uh, if you are uh, take alpha more than one, if you are uh, uh, log alpha below tau s, uh, you um, you you know uh, what is the I mean this p n tends to zero, but one knows the uh, the exponent at which it goes to zero, and its expression are given here. Okay, and uh, um, so uh, the analog of the uh, of the complement of what we did uh, so far goes like this. This is uh, 
we had this uh, threshold for the Boolean case. And now above tau v, there is the tau s, the Shannon uh, threshold. And the Shannon threshold is such that uh, Pn, uh, the, if you, you can pack code words up to this uh, Shannon threshold, and the probability of error tends to zero. This uh, Shannon threshold is strictly above the volume fraction threshold. And above this threshold, then probability of error can uh, um, uh, tends to one, right? But so uh, you see up to now we're packing balls. Now we just take a needle uh, on, on this ball. You, we pick a point on this ball and we ask whether this point belongs to the boundary set. And, uh, and this, this is way finer, especially because of the very high dimension. You, you can have that volume fraction is one uh, uh, and still be able to uh, decode in the Shannon sense, because you don't pack balls. You don't. You 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 try to recognize needles with a given direction, which is a uniform point on them. Okay. So our main result with the Venkat was to go beyond the Gaussian noise case, um, and uh, for this one has to introduce a little bit of machinery. Um, the um, uh, noise now is assumed to have uh, in dimension n. You look at the noise per, per dimension. It's a vector of dimension n, a density fn, with a given differential entropy, and uh, with an entropy differential entropy rate, which I call a small h of uh, w. Right. And uh, this entropy rate. Um, uh, uh, I will represent it as the uh, mean of a uh, random variable, uh, which is called the entropy spectrum. So that's the um, um, that's uh, the entropy spectrum uh, for dimension n. Okay, uh, and uh, the the assumptions uh, will be soon that the entropy spectrum uh, satisfies the uh, large division principle. And so we introduced uh, a notion of decoding partition, uh, which is jointly stationary with the point process, uh, the Poisson point process in a, every dimension. And uh, a decoding strategy is a choice for you to choose <coughs> a partition. Um, excuse me. Um, of the Euclidean space in dimension n. And um, uh, say that if the blurred code word belongs to CN, then you declare that TN was transmitted. And our result is that um, if you call uh, tau n the uh, minus the entropy rate of the noise, additive noise, then if rho is more than this, uh, then all uh, decoding partitions uh, fail. And uh, whereas if rho is less than tau s, then there exists a decoding partition such so that pn tends to zero. <coughs> so, um, and uh, let me describe what the likelihood cells are. You define the likelihood as one over n log of the density of uh, the noise um, of dimension n at locus yn, so very natural definition. And you extend the notion of Voronoi in terms of this likelihood. So lnk is a set of um, uh, points of dimension n in the Euclidean space, xn, such that the likelihood of xn uh, with respect to a tk uh, is more than the likelihood with respect to any other point. And when there is ambiguity, you use the Voronoi to deambiguate it. So it forms a partition, uh, and uh, the result, the general uh, uh, result, is that you can prove that if you use this um, uh, maximum likelihood decoding strategy, uh, then uh, the probability of error uh, actually will be bounded above by the chance that W0 doesn't belong to the uh, likelihood cell of zero. Uh, and there are equalities as soon as the volume of the ambiguous regions is, uh, is zero uh, for all dimensions. And out of that, we could prove a general result for a general additive noise in information theory um, that if the uh, uh, entropy spectrum of the noise satisfies the large division principle with a good weight function I of x, 
For instance, it satisfies the Gertner Ellis theorem with the rate function being convex. Then, uh, under uh, this assumption on noise, uh, uh, if we could get an extension of the uh, polity ref exponent, that if you are uh, log of alpha below tau s, uh, which I recall you with, with uh, minus the entropy rate of the noise, uh, then the uh, error exponent for maximum likelihood decoding is bounded below or equal to, in the good cases, to the solution of an optimization problem. Uh, you have to minimize the function L of R plus I of R. Uh, I of R is the entropy rate of the um, of the um, is the uh, rate of the um, um, function psi. <coughs> Uh, J of R, which is called the volume exponent, is uh, solving the uh, optimization problem uh, sup of S less than R <coughs> of S minus I of S, uh, the rate function of the entropy spectrum. And L of R is just this function of J on the left, positive part of log of alpha minus uh, plus uh, the <coughs> H of W function minus J of R. Okay, so we could extend uh, the, uh, the notion of uh, our experiment to general noise. That's the, the short. Um... Okay, so I will skip proof. And um, um, if, if uh, there are no questions, uh, if there are questions, please um, let me know. And otherwise, I will start describing the uh, hyperplane case. <coughs> Any question? Okay, so maybe okay. yes. Don't look as a question. Just, just a curiosity. <laughs> In the first part of the talk, uh, okay, you presented uh, some uh, estimates uh, on the log scale for the degree threshold and the volume fraction. Yes. Threshold. Mm -hmm. so do you think that uh, maybe under some uh, stronger yeah. assumptions, it is possible to have the exact asymptotics of those quantities? To have oh the, the exact asymptotics? Yes. <laughs> Um, maybe I don't know replacing the conditions on the LDP on the radius. Yes, uh, that's possible. I don't think it was done even for the. Um, I don't think it was done even for the Gaussian case. Uh, what has been done is to uh, to get tighter bounds in uh, intermediate dimensions, uh, which are so this uh, is important uh, for uh, uh, real time. The communications uh, where you cannot afford very big n for this theory and so uh, there are a few things uh, uh, for instance um, in Princeton um, um, uh, it has been work uh, by Vin Vince Poor <coughs> on this type of question um, and um, yeah but it's a big question in information theory improving error exponent is uh, for all scales of n is very important um, and part of the theory goes in the direction uh, of uh, trying to look at what better bounds if for intermediate end thank you okay okay um, uh, but for the Gaussian case uh, typically yeah? okay so let me move to the last topic uh, which is the uh, high dimensional uh, one bit compression so the goal is to estimate uh, uh, high dimensional data points from M one bit measurements. Okay, and uh, you think that way, it's, um, uh, you, you take a family of uh, lines, say um, um, uh, uh, th these lines will be characterized by their, um, uh, um, the orthogonal vector to, to, uh, to the line right, by passing through the origin, right? So call it UI, which is on the sphere. The n, uh, n minus one sphere, uh, and uh, you you encode things by saying uh, on what side of the of this hyperplane you are in every uh, for all all hyperplanes, right? And uh, there is one uh, there are m hyperplanes, and you just encode the sign of the uh, you you compare the uh, uh, inner product of x and ui, and you compare that with uh, Ti, right? And, and you take the sign of that and see, and see your encoding, right? 
Uh, okay, we we'll think about it. When it was started by uh, Plan and Verschinin uh, back in fourteen, uh, who uh, looked at the question uh, on a compact of um, uh, typically on the ball, uh, asking how many um, um, planes you need in order to have a, a high dimensional um, a data point uh, estimate with small error. And uh, they proved that uh, um, so uh, as uh, dimension n go goes to infinity, uh, for a very specific construction, uh, you need an order, a linear order, right? M of order uh, delta minus 4 times n um, uh, random hyperplanes to cut Sn minus 1 into cells of diameter which are smaller than delta. So it's a sort of this type of idea. And this is called one bit compression. And uh, in the same vein of uh, what Paul Kirev did for information theory, we uh, generalized uh, this to a translation variant problem and asked the following type of questions. Your, your data set is, uh, for instance, the whole of Rn uh, or a, a statutory point process in Rn. And you do data compression based on the stationary energetic uh, isotropic uh, Poisson hyperplane process with the intensity uh, rho to the n uh, times n to the alpha, where alpha is, uh, is a positive number, non negative number. Uh, and actually, the Shannon regime in terms of intensity, you can show that if, um, uh, if you take this uh, gamma, which is the intensity of the hyperplane process, to be uh, rho n to the alpha, uh, then if you look at the centroid of the cells, you see, I mean, uh, on the picture, you see, I mean, again, uh, new cells, which are not the Voronoi cells, but which are called Crofton cells, uh, which are delineated by the, uh, by, uh, the uh, certain number of hyperplanes. You can look at the centroid of these cells. And these uh, centroids have an intensity which is order e to the n uh, lambda, right? Uh, for a certain transformation uh, of, uh, of rho into lambda, right? Uh, alpha, uh, and so it means that uh, having the Shannon regime uh, for the uh, centroid of cells is equivalent to choosing alpha is equal to one in the in the hyperplane process. Okay, and the question we ask ourselves uh, is uh, with uh, uh, Eliza Aureli, with this work is done, is uh, what intensity gamma is needed in order to ensure sufficient separation of different data or sufficient proximity of data compressed together for larger. Okay, uh, so and this is this is in the spirit of what is done in uh, in uh, hyperplane of it. You look in a random direction, uh, you uh, which you can do by uh, taking uh, IAD Gaussian coefficients for your linear form, uh, and then you you try to see on what side of this uh, of this hyperplane you are, right? Okay, so uh, there are at the same time measures of separation, which is like the distance to the nearest data compressed differently, or the chance that two different data are compressed together, and measures of distortion. So let me describe mostly the latter. Um, so think of uh, think of that as uh, compression, right? So uh, you you want to encode um, a, a data set or something, and uh, some data in an efficient way, you do that on this one bit things, right? Uh, compare, compare the, uh, to, to the, uh, each of the hyperplanes, right? And what you want is that this to be a good compression, namely that the volume of data compressed together be small, or that all data compressed together are close in a Euclidean distance, right? Okay, and there are again the two, uh, two versions of it. There is the notion of zero cell, which is the cell that contains the typical point, the typical data, and the typical cell, uh, which would be if you would like to take a very big ball, uh, you would average over all cells contained or intersecting this ball, that would be the typical cell, make statistics based on that. Okay, and these two things are different objects. Okay, so um, perhaps I sh would. Uh, how much more time do I have? Um, uh, so you can one two minutes. I don't know. Okay, okay. Oh, then perhaps, perhaps I, I will. Uh, I will go to this. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Go to the uh, um, 
Uh, then we have a question on the chat, yes, but right, at the right. end I will. Okay, so uh, okay, perhaps what I will do is uh, essentially uh, give the summary of distortion, right? Um, okay. Uh, so um, uh, the okay, uh, think now of uh, uh, increasing uh, the number of hyperplanes. So you start with alpha is equal to one, right? And so here uh, we would take uh, a function. Uh, gamma n, which is rho times n to the alpha, right? And uh, n to the alpha when alpha is equal to the Shannon regime, right? And so let me just summarize the, our findings in terms of uh, this, uh, just the distortion and avoid the separation, right? So when alpha is equal to one, let's think you increase rho. Uh, uh, for rho less than one over square root of e, uh, this the mean volume of the typical cell, uh, the volume of the data compressed together is infinity. So I think it's bad. Then you cross this level, alpha is equal to one, rho is one over square root of e, and suddenly the volume is zero and stays zero as you go on increasing is a rho of alpha. But the typical, the, that was for the typical cell. I mean, an average of all cells in a big ball, right? Now for the cell containing zero, which is bigger because it contains zero, uh, when rho crosses the one over square root of e uh, threshold, the mean volume of this zero cell is still infinity, up to rho being pi over square root of e. And there you swap to a typical, uh, to a zero cell, which has an expected volume, which tends to zero and stays zero later. Still, at this stage, if you uh, define Rm, so uh, um, define uh, Rm, which is the, so think of uh, uh, the typical cell now, the, the zero cell, the one containing zero, and look at the smallest ball that uh, contains the whole cell. In a sense, you look at the distance of the uh, point encoded like zero, which is the, f the, the, the further apart from zero, at the biggest distance possible from zero. Call that Rm of Z of the, of the zero cell, right? And so this is really the diameter uh, seen from, uh, uh, diameter is not quite the right word. So this is really seen from zero. The, uh, f f we could also study the diameter, but seen from zero, the point which is encoded like zero, which is the further apart of what distance it lies, right? That's uh, what it does. And so this Rm, the chance that it's more than R is one well, for alpha is equal to one. And you have to move up to uh, alpha is a three half in order to have a swap uh, of the uh, of the chance of seeing something that gen degenerate, like that the chance that it's more than R then would go to zero for all R. And there is again a complex threshold here, uh, which goes into uh, how you change a row. There is a row um, uh, below uh, a constant where uh, it is still one and a row U above which uh, it, it swaps to, to zero. Right, and so these are the limits of the distortion metric as n to, went to infinity when you change the values of uh, the number of hyperplanes. And so what is very important here to grasp is that it's not enough in very high dimension to have the volume going to zero, uh, to have that, the, uh, that, that all mass will be closed, right? So mass lies in corners uh, of, this, uh, of these polytopes and a very, uh, very interesting phenomena that, that show up here. So again, uh, uh, there are error exponents uh, going with that, but uh, I want just to give the main ideas. Okay, so what are the research directions? Um, so um, there are lots of implications for problems on compact domains. I, uh, initially, these problems were looked at on compact, both the Shannon problem uh, and the uh, uh, and the uh, one-bit compression problem. So here we look at this uh, translation invariant theory because uh, there is a calculus which is efficient. One can go to point processes which are other than Poisson. We looked at the determinant point processes, 
Um, and uh, there is very nice work by Jesper Muller and uh, Eliza uh, on that. And the aim is to improve the error of exponents in uh, all cases, right? Uh, in information theory, uh, there is uh, this work is developing to consider other channels, um, uh, information theory channels, I mean, uh, network information theory, multiple access channel, for instance, uh, or other types of information theory constructs like quantum information uh, theory. For compression, uh, there are very interesting results uh, uh, of uh, Eliza on thin shell estimates and uh, lots of current studies on the geometric properties of cells. I mean, you have these polytopes in high dimension with mass in these corners, and uh, the, the, the geometry of that is, uh, is quite, quite challenging. It's, it's really very important to understand the, uh, this compression. Okay, so uh, these are the three papers I uh, um, tried to summarize in, in this lecture, and uh, I'm, thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank thank you. you. So we have time just for a question. Uh, okay, so from Nicola. I'm sorry if, if you can read it. Wonderful. Can your results about... You can read it, Francois? Yes. Uh, ah. Can your results about Voronoi and hyperplane tessellation especially can be seen as anti-concentration? <clears throat> Okay. So, so, so sorry, there were two questions. In yeah, fact. Two questions. So, okay. Uh, okay, this is the first one. <laughs> ah, okay. So, okay, sorry. Uh, right. Okay, so let me uh, start with the second one, which will be uh, easier. Yes. Uh, if you, when you want to solve these optimization problems, so when you know, when you know the uh, uh, rate function, uh, of the uh, entropy spectrum, for instance, uh, or the radii, then you can solve the optimization problem and get closed form expressions uh, for the error exponents uh, or the threshold. Because the what is interesting is that in the first part, for instance, uh, <clears throat> you get that the, the optimization problem shows up uh, right away in the threshold themselves, right? In the second part, the part with uh, on information theory, they show up uh, only in the error exponents. Um, um okay, so the other one was uh this one so the first one um yes at least for, for 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 the Gaussian case uh, yeah I, mean, I, I, case. I yeah i think it's uh yeah and the second one okay uh, uh can result about Voronoi and hyperplane tessellation can be seen as anti-concentration result yes uh, i mean um um well, what happens is that you... Rather you get, than concentration, uh, now yes. it's right in front of us. <laughs> so, uh, you, you mean, yeah, what happens? Let's see. In in small dimension, everything is random, right? So, you take this displacement, and either you are in the cell or not in the cell, and you can make statistics. What happens is that when dimension goes to infinity, everything is black or white, right? Uh, and so this is more uh, really concentration. Uh, high dimension creates concentration. And there are even, I mean, uh, for some of these problems, like thin, thin, thin shell estimates, if you take a, a random point in, the, in a, a given polytope, then it would be at the typical distance. <coughs> so there are lots of results which um, uh, show that, uh, so the, 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 the finite dimensional world is very random when you look at these objects. But the general picture that emerges is that when dimension goes to infinity, you get this uh, amazingly uh, uh, sharp uh, and, uh, transitions where things are either one or zero, um, uh, although there is randomness at the source, right? Uh, and that holds in all, th all three cases. You have seen emerging exactly a threshold uh, which separate one and zero or zero and infinity plus exponents uh, where you try to understand what happens close to that, right? So I would rather, that's probably what you meant. These are concentration results, right? Just uh, out of randomness based on just increasing dimension when you are in the right scale. To find, and the right scale is uh, this square root of height, for instance, is where you find interesting phenomena. Otherwise, it's always zero or always infinite. Okay, Does it so answer your question? Yeah, I think, I think yes. 
uh, it's a Nicola question, but I think it's okay. And yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, Nicola. Okay, so I see now. Thank you. So Nicola, it's okay. So thank you for the answer. <laughs> so thank you for so the thank lecture. you and thank you also for the lecture of course and so uh see you <laughs> maybe okay. in rome. we hope in rome yes yes thanks we a lot it. we wait you in rome yes thanks a lot and um uh it was uh it was nice interacting with you and okay thanks a lot thank you thank you okay goodbye bye, bye. No, it's not.